Welcome. This is Into the Writer's Cave, the show where we chat with fun and fabulous authors about their story worlds. I'm Patricia Sargent, your host, and on this episode of Into the Writer's Cave, we're chatting with fun and fabulous USA Today bestselling author Priscilla Oliveras. So you talked about these different Facebook groups that you um, are part of. Can you share a little bit more about those groups? Sure. Yeah. Right now I'm a, a, a member of three main author reader Facebook groups. Um, two of them have kind of similar vibe. One is more like a woohoo party, party room. Um, that would be the Racy Reads party room. That's actually its name. And uh, in Racy Reads, we have almost 30 romance authors. They, we cover the spectrum of genres and the spectrum of heat levels. So there is something for everyone, uh, you know, in, in Racy Reads, it's a lot of, you know, authors are posting every day, um, just funny questions, funny pictures. There's some promo, maybe someone's give, having a giveaway. We have um, like um, release parties in there. Um, so that's the Racy Reads. Then I'm also um, a founding member of the Four Chicas Chat. That's our Latinx Rom uh, uh, Facebook group. Um, actually, we, and we have readers and authors that that write outside of the Latinx Rom, you know, subgenre. That just Mia, Sabrina, Alexis, and I, you know, form that as a place we kind of lovingly think of it as our casa, like our house. And so we just kind of say the door is always open. Come on in, grab a drink from the fridge, sit on the couch, and let's have some chisme, gossip. Uh, um, so that's on in there. And then Fiction from the Heart is my other um, Facebook author reader group. And that is, there are 12 of us there. Um, we write a mix kind of straddling the line of romance and women's fiction with romantic elements. And um, in that group, and, and I'll, I can try to name them. Uh, it's, I'll tr it's Jamie Beck and Liz Talley and Sally Kilpatrick and Donna Kaufman and Hope Ramsey and Falguni Kafari and Sonali Dev and Quana Jackson and oh my goodness and Tracy Brogan and um, Barbara Samuel, Barbara O'Neill. And there's one other one. I knew I shouldn't have tried to start naming them all. Virginia Cantra. <laughs> oh, she's like a goddess. Virginia Cantra. Yes. So in the that group similar to the Casa, the Four Chicas chat. Um, we don't have a lot of promo. I will say today, October 15th, we're having a big party and we're having a lot of giveaways because it's our two year anniversary. Oh, happy um, anniversary. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> and we did, if you see way up there, that Once Upon a Wedding is my second anthology. We just, that was my latest release. We just released that this past June. So June, 2019, um, 11 of us, uh, one, um, we're able to participate, you know, just due to scheduling and everything. Those, it's, a, it's like a doorstopper of a book if you get the print copy, but it's a beautiful doorstopper. And uh, uh, it is 11 second chance romances. So that's the trope. All of the romances, the couples have either been together or, you know, it's in some way in the past. And so they're getting a second chance at their romance. Um, I stayed in the Fernandez Familia story world for that. And my my romance, uh, my novella is called Always Yours, and the heroine is Lourdes, and she is Diego's trouble sister from Lilian Diego's book, um, and their perfect melody, and now Lourdes is getting her second chance. I kind of played with it, and it's actually like a second chance at life, because she's kind of cleaned up her act, and she's trying to, you know, stay on the right track now, and her high school sweetheart has uh, come back, moved back to Chicago. And so that's where the second chance romance. And also um, the book title, the anthology is called Once Upon a Wedding because within every novella at some point there's a wedding or like the mention of a wedding. And so in my book, the wedding that is taking place that week is Lily and Diego's. So <laughs> readers get to go back to Lily and Diego's wedding um, and um, as, as part of this is happily ever after. Oh, that's perfect because yeah. it's not just, a, as you said, it's not just a second chance at that romance. It's a second yeah. chance with her life. 
Yes. Oh, that's yes. big. So I really enjoyed being able to give her their, their shorter novellas so, because they're 11. So anywhere between 15 and maybe 25,000. Um, but it's also a great way if you're not familiar, if you've never read some of the other authors in the Fiction from the Heart anthology. So you can get it print. You can also get it, um, you know, Kindle or, you know, digital copy. So all digital formats, Nook, iBooks. Uh, um, but it gives you a good sample of all of, you know, like 11 of us. So you can kind of see, yeah, you know, if, if you like Sonali's style in, in her in her book, uh, in her anthology, maybe you want to go check out Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors. Because her, her, her novella has, is a character, for, you know, from that, you know, in Falcony. So some have, have, some of the novellas have ties to books like mine does, like Sonali's. Some of them are standalones, but you still get a good feel for the author's voice and style of writing. And, and maybe it'll entice you to go, you know, check out one of their full length novels. Oh, awesome. Th and that is a really great point. When you have um, an anthology like that, it does give you a flavor so that yeah. you know whether you want to spend the time and money on uh, another book by that okay. author. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yes. yes. Now, was it Racy Reads where you have a bunch of uh, romance yes. subgenres? So like um, at, at the Racy Reads Party Room, because there are almost 30 authors who participate, you know, who are like the hosts of, of that. And so amongst that, that group of authors, there's a wide variety of writing styles, writing voices, genres, subgenres, you know, so you'll, there's probably, I, I, I don't want to say there's something, I like to say there's something for every type of romance reader, or if, if you're not sure if you want to sample, you know, a new genre, you can find an author of, you know, within that group. So I encourage, I encourage, you know, um, everyone to try it's Four Chicas Chat, Fiction from the Heart, and Racy Reads Party Room on Facebook. Well, since you hang out with other authors who write, other romance authors who write like paranormals, historicals, um, comedy, suspense, have you ever been tempted to try another subgenre? Um, that's a good question. I think um, I'm, I'm not a big history buff. And I will say that historical romance readers, in particular Regency romance readers, tend to really know their stuff. Uh, like, no, that was not invented then. No, they did not. They would not have said that. No, they, so, so I shy away from, uh, only because I would be, I would fear, you know, making a, you know, bungling something due to my lack of historical knowledge and my lack of interest in learning more about the day to day, right? I, I learn a lot of that history from reading a friend's Regency romance novel. Uh, um, so probably not a historical, if anything, um, I've, you know, I have some ideas kind of percolating for like a more women's fiction with romantic elements. Um, I don't see myself, at least not in the near future, writing something that does not have some type of romantic element just because that's what I gravitate to. I, I can watch an action film and, and, and be satisfied at the end of it, but I still leave thinking, well, you know, if, if that, if these two characters, they, they, they hinted, but they could have really, you know, that romantic thread could have been a little stronger. <laughs> uh, um, right. So I know that whatever, whatever I write, um, unless something, you know, kind of drastic changes or if it's a nonfiction that for some reason I would write, um, would have so potentially like a woman's fiction with the romantic elements. I have some ideas that I would I would like to maybe flesh out a little bit more and see. But what do you say to people who are wary of trying the romance genre for whatever reason? Right. I would say, why would you not want to feel good while you're reading, and especially when you get to the end of the book? Um, I can watch the news and be depressed, you know, I can, and, and, and not always like there's a time when you want to be scared. So you read a horror. Um, I'm not a big, I'm a big chicken. So that doesn't happen to me very often, but, uh, uh it, but the beauty of the romance is to me, it's an example of what healthy relationships can look like. Right. And how, uh, um, you know, you know, where you're respecting each other and, or, and you're, and you're growing and yes, you're challenging, but you're also supporting 
um, each other. And so within the romance genre, if, you, if you're picking one up for the first time, if you're picking up a Priscilla Oliveras romance, you know, know that you're doing so because you, you're going to hopefully laugh. You, you might cry. Um, but at the end, you're going to be like, yes, they deserve this. Yes, I deserve something like this, you know, or, you know, th this type and this being the sense of satisfaction in life, the sense of happiness in life, this, that's why it's the literature of hope. And so if you're on the fence, I would say, why would you not want to read something that can offer hope? Oh, beautifully put, beautifully put. 